60% of this chapter is coming up with a rate law. A rate law is always going to be rate equals some sort of constant that we call the rate constant K times, this stands for concentration, the concentration of reactant A to a certain exponent times the concentration of reactant B to the certain exponent. So rate equals some sort of constant K times the concentration of A to some power times the concentration of B to some power, something like that. These are called the orders. If they're, they're typically like 0, 1, and 2. Okay. If you add the two orders up, that's the total order for the reaction. All right, so let's try some. You can only get these orders if you look at it uh, experimentally. So here's some fake data. I've got two reactants here, ammonium and nitrite. And then this is my rate. Notice that my rate is measured in molarity per second. This is experiment number one, experiment number two. Okay. Notice that the concentration of nitrite in experiments one and two stays the same. That's our control, right? So when this stays the same, what happens to the concentration of ammonium? It doubles. So I'm going to put a 2 to the x right here equals. What happens to our rate? The rate also doubles. How do I know that? This divided by that is 2. This divided by that is 2. So the rate also doubles. Therefore, my exponent is to the first. Okay. So what would my rate law be? Rate equals k ammonium to the first. Now let's try a harder one. This one's just going to be A and B. I've got three experiments and here's my rates over here. So the first thing you want to do is look for two experiments where something stays the same. Okay. Notice that B stays the same in experiments 1 and 3. A does what? It goes from 0.273 all the way up to 0.819. So it triples. Use the calculator if you don't trust me. 3 to some power equals, what happens over here? It goes from 2.83 to 25.27. It's multiplied by a factor of? Not. Okay. Solve for the exponent. Clearly, A is to the second power, or the second order, if you will. Okay. Now I'm going to do B. So what I'm going to look for is look for two experiments where A stays the same. You see how in experiments one and two, A stays the same. What happens to B? B doubles. And notice that the rate is multiplied by a factor of 1. Okay? Or what I like to say, absolutely nothing happened. So x, anything to the what order is 1? 0 order. So B is to the 0 order. So now I can write my rate law. Rate equals K A squared. I don't even have to put B in there. If you put B to the zero, that's fine, but I don't have to put it in. Okay. All right, I think I have uh, one more. Okay. So what I notice right away is this stays the same, hydroxide doubles, and the rate also doubles. Therefore, hydroxide is to the first. I notice in experiments one and three, hydroxide stays the same, ClO2 doubles. 
and the rates quadruples. Therefore, x is to the second order. So the rate law for this is going to be rate equals k, some sort of constant, hydroxide to the first, ClO2 to the second. Okay. Now, you have to solve for the value of k. So I'm going to take one of these experiments, and I'm going to plug in all my numbers. For example, I'll take experiment number one, and I'm going to plug in my rate, 0.166. I'm going to plug in hydroxide, and then I'm going to plug in ClO2. And I'm going to solve mathematically for K. And I have actually not done this yet, so let me crank this out real quick. I've got a value of, how many sig figs? Two sig figs, 14,000. Okay? The most important part is solving for the units. And all I do for this is I look at my units. Moles over liters, that's molarity per minute. So this time we're doing molarity per minute. Uh, this is molarity, this is molarity. So watch how I do this. I'm going to plug in my units here. Extend this just a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. The rate units were molarity per minutes. This means molarity, right? to the first. This is molarity to the second. The overall order is to the third order. And I'm going to solve mathematically for k. If I was going to solve mathematically for k, I would divide by m cubed, which means I divide by m cubed. I can cancel out one of these m's. So my units that are left over are m that's a, it's supposed to be a capital M. M to the negative 2 minutes to the negative 1. So I go up here to K and write M to the negative 2 minutes to the negative 